should we follow one madhab and stick to it or do we have the right to choose which scholar is correct generally all of the scholars agree that if you are a person who has the knowledge of the deen then you have the right to choose and decipher for yourself but if you're a layman then you don't if you are a person who has the knowledge you have the right generally if you ask me maybe 50 years ago when the media was in advanced i would categorize the muslim ummah into four categories and i've given this answer in detail in my earlier session i'll just summarize in brief that maybe 50 years back when the media was in advance, when there was no internet, when there was no social media, I would personally classify the Muslim Mumma into four categories. One, the lowest category is the person who is a namesake Muslim. He may not be aware of his deen. He is just a Muslim for namesake and may not be a practicing Muslim also. The second category is the person who is a practicing Muslim. He follows the deen, but he does not do research. He does not inquire much. He has no ability to check. The third category would be a student of knowledge who has gone to an Islamic university or done his bachelor's or master's or done PhD. And the highest categories are the scholars. These scholars who nearly have the acumen and they are mushtahid. So, but naturally the last two categories, 50 years back, I would agree that since they don't have knowledge and they don't have access and they cannot check, they should follow one particular madhab, I have no objection, but those who are students of knowledge and those who are scholars but natural, if they find that one particular madhab certain ruling they feel is differing, they can check up with the authentic sources of Quran and Sunnah, they can refer to other scholars and choose which is the correct methodology. Today since science and technology has advanced, media has advanced, today I would divide the Muslim Ummah into six categories. Number one is again those Muslims who are namesake Muslims, they may not be practicing Muslims, they may not be following most of the rulings of Islam, but they call themselves Muslims. The second category, they may be practicing Muslim, but they don't actually check whether what they hear from their scholar is correct or not. They don't have the acumen, they don't have the ability to check. So these two groups which are there, the lowest category, like before, I would advise them that since they don't have the ability, they don't have the resources, they don't have the knowledge to check, then they can just follow one particular madahib and all these four madahib are alhamdulillah established and they are alhamdulillah great scholars. They can follow one madahib, I would say it's right. But since science and technology is advanced, the media is advanced, the third category of Muslim are those Muslims who after hearing something they would like to research they would like to check that this particular fatwa given by this particular scholar this particular madhab is it is it following the Quran is it following the Sunnah they may not have the knowledge to decipher right or wrong but they can read and they can search on the internet they go on the internet they ask the people and today everything is on a fingertip so these so this category the third category may not be very knowledgeable but since they have that urge to check up, they read other sources, they can go on the website and very well once they get the answers of two different scholars, they themselves can go in the Quran, check up, they, can go, they may not have knowledge of the Quran, they may not have, but surely the basic logic they can use and they would fall in the third category like those Muslims who are practicing Muslim and who like checking up and they have access to checking. Then the third category would be, a, sorry, the fourth category, I would say the higher category, that means they are very well versed and very savvy with the internet, they are very savvy with the Islamic websites, they are very savvy with how to go and check on the net whether hadith is sahih or not. They have knowledge that if you go to sunnah.com, you can come to know hadith is sahih or not, you can go to Islam QA and you can check what the scholars say and you can refer, you can go back to various websites, you can see the translation. These are more savvy and they have been doing for many years so they know how to decipher to a certain level what is right what is wrong this would be the fourth category the fifth category would be the student of knowledge
in the fourth category, those who are internet savvy and check, they may be among those who are dies and who can check and who can verify. The fifth category would be the student of knowledge. Student of knowledge, I refer to those people who have gone to universities and who have got a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD degree. Many people call them scholars, I call them a student of knowledge. They are not scholars, but, but they know the basics of fiqh, of usul fiqh, etc. And they are capable enough to decipher. So when they find that two scholars are differing, they can go to the evidence of both these scholars and check up for themselves which is correct. And they have that knowledge of at least deciphering that which dalil is more acceptable as for Quran and Sunnah. So this would be the fifth category which I call astroent of knowledge. And the last and the highest category are the scholars. They are really fuqahas. They have spent a lot of years in research and, the, and in scholars agreeing the different. They are scholars in usul fiqh, they are scholars of hadith, they are scholars of tafsir, they are scholars of Islamic finance, they are scholars of comparative religion. So in this field of scholar, there are different specialty. So each scholar is specialized in his field of hadith, or tafsir of Quran, or fiqh, etc. So each scholar has specialized and they are the highest category. So, today because science and technology is advanced, the first two categories who are namesake Muslim and may not be practicing Muslim, may be practicing very little. Or the second category who practices Islam but not interested in research, don't have the ability, don't really look at it. These two first two categories, previously, maybe 50 years back, when science and technology was in advance, media was in advance, I would say that more than 75% of the Muslim Ummah would fall in the first two categories and maybe less than 25% in the third or fourth, third or fourth category, student of knowledge or scholars. Today, as I said, there are six categories. I would say that less than 25% would fall in the first two categories. Less than 25% fall in the first two categories. And the remaining more than 50, more than 75% of the Muslim Ummah would fall in the third, fourth, fifth or sixth category. The scholars are very few, just a small percentage, a minute percentage. The student of knowledge may be more, maybe 5 to 10 percent. But the majority, that is more than, you could say approximately two-thirds of the Muslim Ummah, they would fall in the third and the fourth category. That means they have access to the social media, they would like to know what is right or wrong. And when they hear anything, they don't, they don't just agree blindly, they check it up. So if you belong to the first two categories who are the, the not practicing Muslim, doesn't have knowledge of the deen, or the second category that who is a practicing Muslim but doesn't want to research, doesn't have the access, doesn't know what to do, then if he follows one particular madhab, whether it's the Hanafi madhab, or the Maliki madhab, or the Shafi madhab, or, or the Hamli madhab, no problem. Because he doesn't know. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 59, Atiullah wa Atiyu Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those who have been given the authority ulul amr but the verse does not stop there obey allah obey the messenger and those who have been charged with authority but the verse continues but if they differ those charged with authority means the scholars and the verse continues if they differ go back to allah and your soul so the complete verse says obey allah and obey the messenger and to understand what Allah and His Messenger say, we have to refer to the scholars. But if the scholar differ, what do you have to do? You have to go back to Allah and His Rasul. We have to follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And when the scholars differ, try and find out which is right. That is the best methodology.